Hello, it's me again. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Alex and I'm currently in South Korea. And if you're not new here, my name is still Alex and I'm actually still here in South Korea. So before coming to South Korea, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really have any idea of what to bring. Like I knew I was gonna be here for a year, I knew the seasons were quite varied, there's very hot summers, there's very cold winters. But in terms of what to pack, I was just like, I don't really know like what do I need, what I don't need. But looking back when I was in the UK and what I was packing, there's some things that I wish I had packed, there's some things I wish I didn't pack. But in this video, I'm gonna talk about 10 things that I think you should definitely pack or definitely look in towards getting before you come to Korea. Korea is a super efficient country and pretty much everything that you need, you can get over here. However, some things are very difficult. So bringing it back from your home country to Korea will be of a great benefit. See, I'm gonna break this video down. I'm gonna break it down into like material things. So things that you can physically pack in your suitcase. And I'm also gonna talk about like extra little bits and bobs that you might need as well. But yeah, as always, if you like this kind of content, make sure you like, make sure you comment and make sure you subscribe. And here we go, here's 10 things that you should pack with you before coming to South Korea. So the first thing that you should pack with you before coming to Korea, I packed like six of them because I was like, I don't think I can get these in Korea, but it is deodorant. I'm talking about the roll on deodorant because Koreans, I don't know what it is, don't know how they're made, don't know what, but yeah, I just don't get it. But they don't really sweat as much as like I do or maybe people that are coming to Korea do. And like I mentioned in the introduction, you can get roll-on deodorant over here. However, it's very few and far between. And the type of deodorant that you can get, it's very slim pickings and it's very, it's not good. So I made it a priority when I came over here. I was like, I need to get roll-on deodorant. Like I'm not someone that really sweats that much. However, I just knew that I couldn't really get it over here. I packed six of them and I've only used one of them so far. So six is plenty enough. But yeah, this is something I definitely recommend bringing. Definitely in the hot summers, you don't wanna be smelly. So yeah, deodorant is a must to bring in Korea. The second thing, again, I literally bought, I think, eight packs? <laughs> I think I bought eight packs of this next thing. However, another thing that I think you should bring to Korea is toothpaste. So obviously you can get toothpaste over here in Korea. Like you can get it in pretty much any convenience store. You can get it in any beauty store. However, the toothpaste over here, no. Like it's just not the same as like back at home toothpaste. Like it's okay. It's kind of, I don't know how to describe it. It's just, ugh. It's just not the same. It's just not the same. If you're very picky when it comes to like flavors and everything, I would definitely recommend bringing some like extra toothpaste with you because obviously you need toothpaste every day. Plus also where I'm working in a school, you actually brush your teeth at lunchtime as well. So I'm ending up brushing my teeth like three times a day. So I'm getting through toothpaste fast. So I would definitely recommend bringing toothpaste extra if you can. Like I said, you can get it over here, but it's just not the same as back at home. Okay, the third thing I would definitely recommend packing with you are full size towels. So it's no joke over here. Like the, there is no such thing really as full size towels. When people shower or bathe, they like have like half the size of like a full size towel. Um, which I've definitely got accustomed to, like it's absolutely fine now. However, if you're back in like the UK or the US or wherever else you're watching this, they don't really sell full size towels over here. I knew this before coming, so I packed like two travel towels with me and these are perfect because they like quick dry, they fold really easily, they're super small and compact. However, they're not the most like comforting, like they're not gonna give you like that spa feel, it's not gonna, do anything, but I mainly packed it just for like ease and like comfort and everything. And travel towels are an absolutely fantastic way just to pack something light in your suitcase. However, they're not the most comforting. They're not the like softest things in the world. However, if you are like, want some of your home comforts, you want like a big towel, you can't really get that over here in Korea. So I definitely recommend bringing one, maybe even two. However, they are big items. So definitely consider this if you are packing. But like I said, you can buy like normal towels over here, but they're gonna be half the size of your towels back at home. So another thing I definitely recommend bringing with you when you come to Korea are like pain medication. So I'm talking like paracetamol. I'm talking like cough medicine. I'm talking like ibuprofen. Like these type of things, like they're readily available over here in Korea, of course. However, they're not the kind of things that you can like buy off the shelf like at a place like Home Bargains or Boots for like 30 pence for a pack of 16. You just can't do that over here. You've physically got to go to the pharmacy. You've got to go to the doctors or the hospital to actually get this kind of stuff, which again, isn't a problem, but it's gonna cost you a little bit more money and it's not gonna be as efficient as actually packing some extras with you when you come to Korea. Obviously, bear in mind like the limits that you can take. I don't really know like how much you can physically, legally, possibly 
actually take with you to Korea, like do your research because I don't actually know. However, I would definitely recommend taking like two or three packs at least of um, pain relief because there will be times where you get a headache. But if you are like working in a school, for example, like I am, every school has a nurse's office. And if you do ever feel like run down or a little bit ill, the nurse will gladly give you some medication for free. So don't worry too much. However, this is something that I definitely wish I packed more of before coming to Korea because sometimes I find myself a little bit hungover or a little bit worse for wear and I'm just like god I wish I had more paracetamol on me. Okay so the fifth thing that I would definitely bring with you to Korea so I bought way too many of these with me Um, I'm only actually using two of like the eight that I brought with me however you need to have converter plugs. So in Korea they actually use the f-type converter so what they use in and around Europe and it's a very popular plug converter However, if you are from like America or you're from the UK, you definitely need to convert all your electronics into this converter plug because obviously in Korea, it's a different plug system. So this sick thing I would definitely recommend bringing. Um, in terms of plus size clothing, it can be very difficult to come across. Even in like your Western stores, like H&M, your Zara's over here, they tend to have like a smaller size range. So if you are of like the plus size, you may need to consider like bringing more clothes with you ordering offline or to get it shipped to Korea. Of course, there are places over here. However, the majority of the stores cater for smaller people. So just keep this in mind because it might be a bit more difficult for you to find like good quality clothes over here. So yeah, just keep that in mind. So these next couple of things are like more logistical things that you're gonna need over here instead of like physical things to pack with you. However, the seventh thing that I would definitely recommend getting if you want to come to Korea, is a SIM card. I personally use a Trazy SIM card when I got over here, so it's like a 30-day SIM card, and I can't recommend getting a SIM card enough. Like, having a Korean phone number over here is so beneficial for, like, things like ordering takeout or ordering taxis and things like that, and I was super happy that I got one of these before I came to Korea, because life kind of does really suck without a Korean number, just to warn you. And if you are over here long term, so if you are a student, if you are working over here, you can eventually get a actual Korean number and a Korean phone contract. So you've actually got to wait for your alien registration card, so your ARC card, and this might take like 30 days, 60 days, or however long it takes. So the in-between period is like a perfect time to have like a temporary SIM card, and you can extend it every month as well. And depending on what contract you go with, and there is no limit, so it's absolutely fine. And I'm not gonna lie, like it's a little bit more expensive. So the one that I went with, I think it's like 35 pounds for the month. So it's not in all too bad. However, if you are stay over here longer, definitely get an actual Korean phone contract. But before you come over to Korea, make sure you get a SIM card. Um, I'll leave a link down below of the company that I went with. However, there's loads of different companies out there, so make sure you do your research. Okay, so the eighth thing I would definitely recommend bringing with you before you come to Korea is a VPN. For those of you that don't know what a VPN is, it's a virtual private network. So you download it or you pay for a subscription on your laptop or on your electronic devices. And basically it kind of tricks the system into thinking that you are anywhere in the world. So if you're like really wanting to watch like American Netflix, or if you really wanted to watch like British Netflix, a VPN can like trick where you are and actually help you watch different things in different countries. And obviously it's not only just tricking the system into watching different things in different countries. Like personally for me, like when I was buying like Mother's Day gifts or Father's Day gifts, I tricked my laptop to thinking that I was actually based in the UK. So it was a lot easier and a lot cheaper to buy things like in the UK from my laptop, even though I'm in Korea. And also there are many more bonus things with a VPN. It's a lot more secure, your details and your security is all safe and everything. However, I definitely recommend getting this before you come to Korea because usually the contracts for a VPN like last a year. So if you are over here on like a year placement or something, it's a perfectly great deal to get before you come to Korea. Okay, so the ninth thing I would definitely recommend bringing with you. This one is quite of a niche one and I wish that I got it before I came to Korea. However, it's an international driving license. So an international driving license, like I physically got a driving license back in the UK and I've bought that with me to Korea and it's perfectly fine for like things such as like IDs or things like to prove who you are. However, in terms of actually using it for driving purposes, like rent a scooter or a motorbike or even a car, 
Hey, it's not gonna work. So I was potentially thinking of getting like a motorbike for like my summer vacation, just going on, like a kind of little road trip, but I can't do that because I haven't got my international driving license. And it's like one of those things that you have to apply for when you're in the country that you're actually in. So like, for example, I can't apply for my international driving license here in Korea for a UK one. I've physically got to be in the country. I've got to send off all my documents and it's just uh, too much of a faff. So this is one thing that I do definitely regret not bringing with me to Korea. And if you are to apply for one, make sure you apply for it like relatively early because these things can take like weeks, possibly even months to apply for. So if you are planning or even potentially planning to drive over here in Korea, or if you're planning to go on vacation to some other country and you're planning to get like a motorbike, make sure they get an international driving license. Like it's not too expensive. I believe they're about like 30 pounds. Don't quote me on that. But yeah, it definitely saves you the hassle of not having one and not potentially doing what you wanna do over here. And the last thing, the 10th thing that I would definitely recommend bringing with you, if you wanna come over here, especially long-term to Korea. And I think this is like the biggest thing that you can get if you are working over here in Korea, it's your residency tax form certificate, proof of residency. So I was stupid enough, I didn't get it when I was in the UK and I'm kind of annoyed at myself. However, it's a form and it's like proof of residency is to prove that you're a resident of your country, but basically it exempts you from paying tax over here. So you don't have to pay any tax on any money that you earn. And right now, because I don't have one, like I am paying tax, but I am in the process of getting mine from the UK to Korea. So it's absolutely fine if you don't bring one. It's just like a logistical nightmare and you can claim back any tax that you have paid. But yeah, definitely recommend getting this before you come to Korea because Oh, I just wish I did that. And again, this can take like weeks, even months to come. So definitely like look into getting this before you come to Korea. If you don't wanna pay any tax or you don't wanna wait for like a claim back or anything. So yeah, your residency tax certificate, you need it, you need it, you need it. Oh God, I wish I had mine right now. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. Thank you for sticking around for the very end. But yeah, like I said, like lots of things you can buy over here in Korea. Like you can buy deodorant, you can buy toothpaste. However, it's all down to preference. And if you want your home comforts like a big towel, then you're gonna need to bring that with you. However, it's also very easy to adapt to Korean culture over here. Like whatever you need, you can get. If you can't get it, it's very much similar. We just have to slightly adapt to the way of living. But in terms of like documents, like the residency proof of, what's it called? Rev <laughs> proof of residency. You're gonna need that before you come. You're probably gonna need a VPN before you come and you're definitely gonna need a SIM card before you come to Korea. So things like this, definitely get beforehand. But yeah, I hope this has helped you. Um, if you need any more questions or anything answering about life in Korea, things you should bring with you, things that you probably shouldn't bring with you, drop me a comment down below. I'm more than happy to help you out. Um, give me a message on Instagram, drop me an email. I'm more than happy to help you out. But thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will catch you next time on this channel. Have a good evening, have a good night, have a good morning, and I will see you next time. Bye.